again, everybody. I'm Snapper Lancaster, welcoming you to another edition of the Central Alabama High School Sports Show. I want to remind you that uh, the way you can catch us on your internet every week is castvshow.com or uh, like us on Facebook. We hope you do that because uh, we'd love to have you catch us. Uh, we've got a great show lined up tonight. As a matter of fact, uh, it's a championship evening on our show tonight. not going to tell you who the coach is. You're going to have to stick around and see. But the football championships are just getting underway. The playoffs are starting this way a week for all the classifications. And we had the volleyball championships decided this past week. And uh, another sport next week where they have their championships is cross country. So it's getting to be a very busy time for the high school athletes and also for us because it's when we crown champions and find out who the champions are in all the new classifications and regions and our uh, different sports. But uh, before we get to the show, I want to tell you one of my sponsors has got a special going on, the Drive Shop located out in Trustful on Highway 11 between downtown Trustful and uh, Deerfoot Parkway. Uh, you can't miss them. Uh, get by, get gift cards, whether it be if you want to get a gift for your son, for your husband, for your dad, for relatives, a gift card where they can go by and get some kind of uh, product that personalizes their vehicle, whether it be car, truck, SUV, um, or all-terrain vehicle, you name it, boats, they can do that as well. Just remember, get by before Christmas. What a great Christmas gift, a gift card. We're going to get our show started in just a few moments. Got a couple of great coaches with some outstanding athletes. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. Good driver discount, multi-car discount, good student discount. Helping you save money on car insurance is just part of the service you get from State Farm Agent Jack Traffinstead. Whether an accident or a simple question, Jack and his staff get you the help you need. And that's the value only a State Farm agent can provide. Call Jack Traffinstead today. 40 million drivers already know nobody gives more discounts to more drivers than State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. If you want to personalize that special vehicle you drive, whether it be a car, SUV, or that truck that you love so much, then you need to visit the drive shop. They're located between downtown Trussell and Deerfoot Parkway on Highway 11, where their fine service staff of professionals are waiting to serve you. The services include auto systems, security and remote start systems, tires and wheels and window tinting, just to name a few. So come by and visit them today or find them online at thedriveshop.com or visit us on the Facebook. That's the Drive Shop in Trustful, 533-8785. Also, if you mention Snapper's name, you'll receive a 10% discount. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, oh, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And folks, welcome back. And as I promised a few moments ago in our first segment, we're visiting with a championship coach. And of course, we're talking about Coach Haven O'Quinn of Mountain Brook. Her Spartans just won the 7A championship in volleyball. And before we get to talking about that, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. But for people that might be seeing you for the first time, I know we had you on last year, mm -hmm. but we're probably going to have some new viewers. Okay. Give us a little bit of your background and what led to you being the head coach, uh, volleyball coach there at Mountain Brook. Okay, well, um, I grew up in Daphne, went on to play at Troy, and then um, pretty much I think I knew as about my sophomore year of college, I knew that I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to coach. And so I thought I would, then that I wanted to coach club ball because it was fun and you travel. And that was kind of where I started and um, was teaching first grade and coaching club. And then um, Kim Keel, which is the athletic director at Pelham, got me there. And I coached uh, two years at Pelham High School, loved it. And then the Mountain Brook job came open. And um, that was just the best thing that ever happened because it has just, I mean, since day one, it has just been a good fit. And so now this is your second? Third, third season. Third this season. Just yeah, yeah, just finished the third season. Um, so you've had these girls for mm -hmm. a, a couple of years. They're, yeah, they're my girls. And uh, going into this season, 
did you think that, that you and, and your girls were ready for the next step, which would be a serious playoff contender? Absolutely. Um, I think when we finished our season last year, we made it to the Final Four, which was exciting. And, um, you know, it was, it was a big hype, and it was the furthest that Mountain Road Volleyball had gone was to that Final Four. You know, that was the, that was the biggest um, accomplishment in the school history. But I think even when we finished that match, and, I mean, Huntsville – we lost to Huntsville last year at that Final Four semifinal match. And I just remember, like, as excited and proud as I was, like, I knew that, that what we did that day was the first step in winning the state championship this year because we just needed that playoff experience. And so um, we got it, and I think we learned a lot from it. And then this year it wasn't the, oh, my gosh, we're here. It was a, yeah, we're supposed to be here. We were very expectant. Um, from the very first day of tryouts, I think just the entire team, the whole program, I think everybody had a common goal and saw the same vision the entire entire season. And um, we were really, I was not surprised at all. Um, and we talked about it every day. Like I think every day we said, this is how we're going to win a state championship or when we win the state championship or you're not going to win a state championship like that. Like, you know, we just, we, we talked about it. So. Well, you know, there's something to be said too for being, there's a whole lot of difference between confident and cocky and oh, evidently yeah. you and your girls mm -hmm. uh, had won the right attitude mm -hmm. plus you had the players there everything in place mm -hmm. and and you learned last year as close as you were you had the talent this year mm -hmm. to maybe mm -hmm. do the, get the the whole enchilada as the old saying goes and that's what they did folks first uh, first title in mountain brook history in volleyball and that was surprising to me because uh, Mountain Brook has had a, a storied history with their sports programs mm -hmm. and, and all. And so, but, but Coach, being uh, involved in soccer as many years as you had a, a player and now ending up coaching, in those years, how have you seen the girls playing soccer changed? Uh, I know one of the big changes, they become more athletic, more focused, more physical through the years. Mm -hmm. And all this was with the hope of one day, if they win a championship or even if they don't, maybe playing at the level to where a college education can be gotten mm -hmm. with it. So how have you seen the um, changes from um, early mm -hmm. uh, volleyball, so to speak, to where it is now? Because I know mm -hmm. it's a whole lot more precise mm -hmm. physical sport. It is. Um you know, I think with I think all sports. I think that this is this is directed towards volleyball, but I think it's directed at all sports now. And I think it's it's a it's a pro, but it's also a con. I just think that the sport has evolved so much, especially in the state of Alabama. Alabama volleyball has always kind of been a step behind. And I really think that when you compare what we're doing to you know the Texas and the places up north that are so strong and out west, but we're getting there. Like we're we're we've got some really really talented skilled players in the state of Alabama. And um, a lot of it is these girls, like all sports, like soccer and the different sports, um, they are, a lot of them are playing year round. And a lot of them are doing extra training outside, not just necessarily on the volleyball court, but I, I have girls that I know are, are, are seeking training just in you know, plyometrics and jumping and they wanna get better and they're trying to, to do everything they can to put themselves in the best position to be the best. And I see that at Hoover and I see that at John Carroll and I'm seeing that at Pelham. I mean, all these different schools in the Birmingham area, you've got girls who are really just committed to the sport. Um, but with that, and like I think that, and I think that's a that's something that with it getting better for each sport, it's also taking kids away from other sports. Right. And um, so there's pluses and negatives. There's to it, pluses and negatives because I think now because it is so competitive and there are all these options and ways to get better at your individual sport, I feel like kids are they feel like they have to decide early that they have to choose one to be great at one, um, and I think that's sad. Right. Like I and I, you know I love my multi sport athletes. Um, you know, I just I think as long as you're competing, I think that I think that you're going to get better, and you don't want burnout. And you're right. seeing more and more burnout, especially with females. You know, when they get those car keys, they just their priorities shift and change. And I just I, I think we need to kind of back off a little bit um, so that our our athletes stay happy and, and can continue to play for their for their four years. And then you're talking about going on to college. I mean, that to me, that's your average player. Now you get those players who know. I live and breathe this. I'm right. going to play at the next level. Now, those are the kids that are going to be playing year-round, okay. and they're going to be going to that trainer and working on these things. And But that's because that's just 
that's in their blood. How important has club soccer been volleyball. for the soccer? I mean, bo yeah. volleyball. That's okay. how, how important has that been? Because I have, I'm not familiar with as many club mm -hmm. volleyball players mm -hmm. as you hear in other sports. Mm -hmm. Is it something that's making an inroads too? Mm -hmm. And is it a positive for you as a high school coach, knowing that the girls have had all this experience behind them already? Oh, I think it's wonderful. And I mean, I'm such a club advocate and I want, I mean, I want my girls playing year round. If they're not playing a different sport, my gosh, I, I expect them to play and I want them to be committed. And every experience you're on the court, you're gonna get better. And and of course, I think every high school coach wants their kids to play club, but um, you know, I think it's important that we're not competing against one another. Like, I don't want volleyball competing against volleyball. Um, that's crazy. You know, we need to all be on the same page and, and support our kids. And um, I think it's just all about communication. And um, you know, I, I don't know. I think I think club is great, and I think club is needed, and it is a huge, huge. Um, aid for recruiting like that's when they're going to be seen by these college coaches well, very quickly we only got 30 seconds okay. left and boy time flies when you're having fun but great yeah the ultimate goal you win the championship mm -hmm. next year mm -hmm. you've got some girls coming back mm -hmm. is that you've got that on your radar screen already, already don't you? already i'm trying to enjoy this one but i'm already going okay next year i'm already looking like i need to just i need to take a breath but um I love it, and well, I love them, and I want, I, it was just so much fun to watch them do that because they worked so hard the whole time. Like, they were just awesome. Well, it was congratulations great. to your first championship, maybe the first of many. Yay, thanks. <laughs> we're going to take a quick okay. break. We come back, three young ladies, very instrumental in that volleyball title. Don't you go away. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound Daily Pouch, now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet turkey and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including Daily Shave Bristro and Sub Sandwich Kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact State Farm agent Thomas Waters about a car loan that can save you hundreds. Folks, as we come back, I want to remind you very quickly, the way you catch our show is on our website, castvshow.com, or like us on Facebook. And as I promised, we've got three young athletes here that were so instrumental in Mountain Brook winning that very first volleyball championship for the school. And I, I still can't get over the fact it's the first, but boy, y'all let me know. It absolutely is, and, and y'all were a big reason for it. Uh, sitting closest to me, Sarah Carr, Jr., outside hitter. Uh, next to her, Julia Smith, libero, senior, and uh, then Sarah Chandler Mitchell, and uh, I think you are a junior as well, right? Yes, sir. All right, girls, what I will do, I'm going to ask you the same question because yeah, you might get a little bit of a different answer, but is this what you expected when this season started? And we'll start with you, Sarah. Um, we did. It was our goal from day one that we were going to be the first 7A state champions, and um, I think just the, like, talking about it every single day and engraving it in our heads, like 
we, we had to have a common goal to get where we wanted to go. And I think the fact that we, that we did that, and like Coach Haven said, we did talk about it every single day. Um, I think that we all knew where we wanted to go and we had to work hard to get there. So I think we really expected ourselves to be there because we were working like we should have worked and we had it in our heads that that's what we wanted to do. Well, let me tell you, before we move to the next lady, young lady, I want to tell you just a little bit. First of all, Sarah here was the MVP of the tournament. She had uh, 16 kills, 14 digs, and three blocks, and that's all in the same game, right? And I'm just playing, but that's a tremendous ball game. Congratulations well, thank you. Thank to you. you. And that Libero, talking about our defensive specialist here, Julia, you had 21 digs, which means you were busy <laughs> and evidently did a great job. And Sarah Chandler, of course, 38 assists. Now, that's, uh, that's, that means you're helping somebody else put points on the board and do it a lot. Uh, Julia, uh, talking about it from your aspect, being the only senior, uh, you've seen, I guess, your program get better year after year after year. So did you think that this was going to be the culmination of all that hard work this year? Oh, yes, sir, for sure. I mean, I can tell you from not this past year's trouts, but last year's trouts, I remember I looked at my dad after trouts the first day. I was like, Dad, this team is going to be good. And, I mean, that year we made it to the Final Four, and then this next year, I mean, I knew we could do it without a doubt. And like Sarah said, I mean, it was all part of a process, and we engraved it in our heads. But we had to make sure, like, we talked about, like, oh, we want to be the first 7A state champions. But we didn't want to, like, use that loosely. Like, we, when we said that, like, we meant it, we weren't going to be like, oh, my gosh, like, let's just go win. Like, we can't do anything without that. But we, like, we were focused, and we worked hard, and it was such a process to get there. And it's so rewarding in the end to see the final outcome and us reach our goal. Yeah, well now, let me tell you, uh, you won't have this problem, but these two young ladies will next year. It's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge for one simple reason, one simple reason only. You will have that number one bullseye on your back, which means everybody realizes if you wanna be the best, you gotta beat the best. And you girls are the best. And going into next year, you're gonna have to be a little bit better, and that's not a bad thing because I got a feeling from listening to what the coach says and from the enthusiasm you girls have that y'all expect big things next year as well. And uh, Sarah, uh, Chandler, Sarah Chandler, talk about that aspect from your standpoint. Uh, you'll be coming back next year. What are your expectations, one for yourself and then two for you and your teammates next year? Um, well, I think definitely coming into next year, we want to win another state championship. I mean, we've um, we've talked about that already coming off of this state championship. Um, so that's definitely a team goal. And then for me, honestly, I think it's just giving everything that I have to my team. I mean, I think that's something that everyone can say, but being able to like look around at your teammates and just know that you're helping them achieve their goals too, that's really important. Sarah, one thing that I would like to ask you, uh, one thing to me that is so important with any team to their success, no matter how good or how bad or or how much you're going to improve. The, one of the most important points about a team is team chemistry. And to have good team chemistry, now this has got to be extra hard for young ladies, and, and please don't take that as a negative, but what I mean is you've got to get along with each other. And, and the better you get along with one another, the better you can be not only as an individual, but as a team. Talk about the chemistry aspect. Of it. Um, honestly, I think one of the reasons we got so far was because of our team chemistry. I mean, from day one, we knew we had the talent, but talent can mean nothing if you don't have the chemistry, like you said. And I think, you know, every single day, we look forward to going to volleyball practice, not just because it's volleyball, but also because you get to play volleyball with your best friends. And um, I think that's just something really special that we had because you could see your, you know, you could see your best friends succeed and you just have so much fun playing the game with your best friends. And I think like off the court, we were always with each other, not just on the court. Like we, volleyball season, we are always with each other. Um, I'm actually going this weekend to an Auburn game with one of my teammates, like, you know, like even after season, it never ends, you know? And I think that helps on the court in the sense that you know the person forwards and backwards, um, all your teammates, and how they're going to react in every situation. And just the fact that we really all truly love each other, I think that just made the world of a difference for our team. Well, now, Julia, with her having said that, um, how do you feel about the, the, the aspect of how important team chemistry is? And is, 
Is it hard to keep it at that level, at a, a high level? Or do you, the friendship that y'all have made through the years, it sounds like it's made it a whole lot easier. Oh, for sure. I mean, I get, I've been lucky to, I like get to spend way too much time with them <laughs> as, in people's opinions. Like we were all on the same club team this past year. So like since last June, we've pretty much been together for a, every day. like <laughs> almost every day, literally. <laughs> but I mean, it's great. Um, but for sure, I mean, team chemistry is so, so beneficial. Um, I mean, I know people on other teams, like, I'll talk about my team and just smile, and they're like, I'm so jealous, like, that you do that, and like, but it just comes natural to us, like, it's nothing that, like, we've had to, like, work on or anything, like, and like Sarah said, like, we're all best friends, like, we're just family, and we get along so well, and I mean, obviously, like, at times, like, we might have, like, a little hiccup or something, but we know how each other's going to react to something, and we can just shake it off and be like, I mean, that's just her, like, it's not a big deal, just move on from it, so... When well, Sarah Chandler, one thing I want to ask you, and Julia mentioned it just a little bit, but practice. Not everybody enjoys practice. I, I was one of those I always, I played sports, I enjoyed the practice as much as the games, but some people really don't like it. How about you? It sounds like y'all had a, a great time at practice and used it in a positive way. I mean, I think we really did. I think we all, like because we vocalized so much that we wanted to win a state championship, we came in to every practice knowing that we were going to get better and that we were going to be working towards that state championship. And so, I mean, of course, I think everyone's going to have that day that they're just not feeling it. But I think because our team chemistry was so strong, we were able to build each other up and we were able to remind each other what we were working towards. So. Well, now I've got a question and I'm going to ask Sarah first so that you other girls will have a little bit more time to think about it than she does. But I have just met you girls for the first time. And so maybe there's something about you that most people don't know. And if there is, what would it be? And, I, and I'll give an example, like uh, maybe one of you might like to sing, one of you might like to play golf, write poetry, or, or whatever, or hunt. But if that one thing that I wouldn't know about you and you were going to tell me, what would it be? Um, the one thing, well, I am really <laughs> close to my family. Um, just, I don't know, I just love being with my family, especially my older brothers. I think, you know, since they've been to college, I've, like, realized, like, how much I miss them and all, and I just, I really enjoy spending time with my family. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, <laughs> because a lot of people want to run from their family sometimes, <laughs> so that's great. How about you, Julia? Uh, well, mine's not as nice as Sarah's, <laughs> but um, I guess one thing that, as of late, that I've really been interested in is playing the piano. Really? So uh, when I was little, I used to take lessons, but I can't say that I remember any of that at all. Mm -hmm. But so I've been, I've been trying to pick that back up a little bit. So I'm not. Let me tell you this. <laughs> from what I've learned about you, if you're as good, could get as good as the piano as you are a volleyball player, you'll be playing them keys off for it. <laughs> How about you, Sarah Chandler? <laughs> Well, I was trying to think. Um, I think something that I've actually started doing is I really want to run a half marathon. So I've started working towards that, and I've started running every day, which I think is it's a hefty goal, but it's something that I want to do. So. Well, yeah. well now that's, that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I know people that have <laughs> never run in marathons or anything like that till they got out of school, and all of a sudden that was something that they pushed to do because it was a, a cha another challenge. Now the one, that, the big challenge you got to worry about. Remember next year is that bullseye. I always remember that. All right, now girls, I know. Now um, I will ask you this, Julia, because you're the only senior. Yes, sir. Or do you plan to play volleyball in college? Or where? Let's put it this way: If you could go to any school you wanted to, now say you don't have a scholarship right now. If you could go to any school you wanted to. Where would it be and what kind of courses would you take? Oh, goodness. That's actually a really good question because I don't, I don't know the answer, to be honest. <laughs> I definitely have some decisions to make. Um, I don't know exactly what my plans are, but I do want to stay in the South, so obviously a school in the South. Um, but course-wise, I, I like I, marketing is really interesting to me, specifically sports marketing I would love to go into. but. So that's about all I can give you on that right now, but yeah, okay. I'm not quite sure. Okay, well, listen, I've got one minute. Boy, the time flies. Now, this question, 
I want to ask each of you and answer hurriedly, but to this point in your young lives, who's been the most inspirational person or persons? And we'll start with you, Sarah. Um, my mom. She yeah. is just there for me whenever and sometimes believes in me more than I do, which just pushes me to be my best. Good. Um, I'd definitely say my dad. He's always been, he's kind of like a sports dude. I'm, I'm a daddy's girl, growing up loving sports, and he's been my coach for rec league, being little, and he's, he's always told me he's been my biggest fan and always will be, so. Good for you. Sarah Chandler? I would probably have to say both of my parents. I know that's like not, you yeah, know, that, narrowing it down, that, but that. I mean, they both, I mean, they pushed me to be my best, like they said, and I mean, they're always there, so. We're good. Well, listen, girls, I want to say congratulations again, and for the girls coming back, uh, Repeat, that's the key word for y'all, okay? <laughs> but congratulations on a great Thank year, and thanks Thank for coming you. up and visiting with us. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't you go away. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound daily pouch, now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet turkey and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including deli shaved bristro and sub sandwich kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. Drive Shop in Trustful not only personalizes cars, SUVs, and trucks, they can personalize your motorcycle or ATV as well. They also specialize in automotive accessories to fit your specification. They provide performance and fuel economy upgrades, lift kits, off-road accessories, custom lighting, bed liners, and much more. Once again, that's the Drive Shop located just north of downtown Trustful on Highway 11. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and on Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The number to call, 533-8785 or visit us online at thedriveshop.com or like us on Facebook. Don't forget, you'll receive a 10% discount if you mention Snapper's name. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanna say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay. Does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdot in Trustville today. And folks, welcome back. And in this segment, we're going to shift gears a little bit. We will not be talking volleyball. We're going cross country. And of course, uh, as you can tell by the shirt here that uh, Coach wears, it's uh, orange and black. And of course, I think that color stands out here in the Birmingham area, Hoover. We're talking about Coach Devin Hine. Coach, good to see you. Thank you for having me. And for a lot of uh, people, maybe Coach, that haven't seen you before, tell us a little bit about your background and how you ended up being the uh, head cross country and track coach there at, at Hoover High. Well, I'm, I'm from Michigan. I came down and I ran track at Alabama and uh, ended up starting to coach at Barry High School back in 1978 and uh, uh, started a lawn service business three years later, but got back to coaching uh, 20 years ago almost at uh, Simmons Middle School. And then when Mary Birdwell retired, I took mm -hmm. over for her. So it's, I'm in my 12th year at Hoover now. Well, that's, uh, I tell you what, it's, if I, my member, sir, memory serves me correct, you've had a pretty successful 12-year run. 
And, we have. We uh, sure have. Uh, and uh, talking about it from that aspect, tell me a little bit about this year's team. Uh, has it been as successful as you thought it would be, or is you, do you feel like the best is yet to come with the state meet that's coming up? Or how, how is your team at, where, at the point where they're at right now? Well, I'm hoping the best is yet to come. State meet is, is coming up, and uh, it's been a really pleasurable year to coach. The kids have worked really hard, and um, they performed really well in most, most of the meets. And so hopefully we'll peak this Saturday and have a good showing at state meet. Well, and, and I don't say this to single out anybody because I don't know that much about your team, but um, tell me, have you been blessed with a lot of outstanding athletes in different, uh, uh, the, the track field all together, but um, in the cross country part of it, specifically since we're dealing with that right now? Well, cross country is 5K. We've got a lot of good distance runners. And uh, the great thing about our team is we really don't have any stars. They've worked really hard together and and they've just pulled the younger ones up they just uh, our boys team dedicated themselves i think last may and said we want to be the first 7a state champions and they have just really improved they were fifth in the state last year and they're light years ahead of last year and our girls uh have done the same they're much better than they were in the last year talk about uh, the evolution of, of cross country running through the years you know for the for the longest um uh, that sport did not exist uh, as far as I knew. And, uh, but it's one that where you get a lot of people participating. I, I had no idea. I got two granddaughters now that, that participate in cross country, uh, one at Gardendale and, and one at, at Trustful. And I see an awful lot of young athletes running today. There are a lot. Now, I'm not old enough to know when it didn't exist. It's existed <laughs> a long time. We just went to a meet in uh, New York City a month ago and we ran on a course, the oldest course in the United States and people have been running the same cross country course for over 50 years. So cross country is not a new sport. <clears throat> it was pretty popular when I was uh, in high school back in the 70s and uh, it's grown in popularity. Well, I was going to say that I guess I'm dating myself a little bit because I was back <laughs> in the early 60s. And, and uh, back then, it did. Well, I know it didn't have the popularity that, that it does now. And, uh, yeah, you might have 20, 20 kids on a team back then would be a large team. Uh, my team this year has 105. I was going to say, now that, talking about the growth aspect of it, I don't, I don't see any sport growing any faster than that does. What, and, and the kids would be telling you this, um, I, I guess. What, what's the allurement uh, for, for the young cross-country athlete? What's, what is the turn on to that? for kids it's just the love of running or the obstacle part of it or or what well that? there's uh i don't know what i think they just want to be a part of something and uh, the lure is their friends saying hey why don't you do cross country it's fun now most people don't think of cross country as fun and it's it's really it is fun just the camaraderie i think it's the best team sport there is uh, when i was young i played a lot of team sports i ran cross country in high school uh, you bond closer with your teammates in this sport than any other sport. So uh, I think it's just a camaraderie, and most people don't think that cross country would be fun, but their teammates, uh, you know, they recruit. I don't recruit. They recruit each other. Is the, is the challenge um, in cross country the clock, or, the, or you know? Uh, well, it is as an individual, but uh, when it comes to a team, the challenge is beating the other teams. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, Coach, I guess – uh, not ever having run cross country, um, I think the most surprising statement that you, that you have made and sort of uh, let not only me but maybe our viewers understand where you're coming from is how close the, the runners get that, that compete in the sport. Yeah, you make lifelong friends. I've got uh, friends from high school. I'm, like I said, I'm from Michigan and uh, we hardly ever see each other or talk to each other, but if I got together with them tomorrow, uh, we'd probably sit and talk for eight hours, have a good time, just like it, it was 40 years ago when we were so close. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's a great bonding experience. Talk about, just for a second, um, the, the courses that you compete in, because evidently there are different type courses, 
uh, terrain wise and, and, and I know we were talking when you and I talked on the telephone I didn't even realize some of them are run on golf courses because I think I explained to you I'll go watch my granddaughters I'm there at the start line they are gone and disappear and the next time I see them is when they're coming across the finish line but not all meets are like that is it? No not all meets are like that we rarely run on golf courses but we happened to last weekend sectionals Hewitt Trustful uh, uh, the country club out there allowed us to have a meet there, and that was beautiful spectator course. I could see them run every step of the way. Uh, generally, I have to do a little running myself to, to see them. Uh, if you generally stand at one spot, start and finish, you'll see that. But I get out and I move a little bit, and I can see a lot of the race, see them come by five or six times. I know I went to uh, one of the cross-country meets at Spain Park, yeah, uh, where they have it out there in that little park that's in front of the school. Uh, Veterans Park, Veterans maybe Park. is what they mm -hmm. call it. And I know that I, I did get to see a little bit of the running, mm -hmm. not, not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I think, like you say, I, I, the thing that impressed me the most is, one, you're up close to the athletes when you're in certain areas, when you can watch them come by. And you can tell in their facial expressions or in their uh, the, the way what you see uh, – in their face when they're running. You can tell that's that's intent and they take it seriously too, don't they? Oh yeah, they're out there not to uh, play around. So uh, that's a permanent cross country course out there that Mayor Patel has uh, set up. It's been widely popular and uh, that's our home course also. And so we run there, uh, we've run there twice this year. And well, it's, it's, all right, going, uh, we only have 30 seconds left. As you head to the state meet this um, uh, it's coming weekend, mm -hmm. Uh, is your team, you feel like your team peaking at the right time? Uh, they seem to be to me. We'll find out Saturday. Well, I tell you what, the, and I know what you're hoping to find out is whether or not that you're going to get that state championship or not. That's always hope, the goal. Hope you yeah. do, Coach. I know you've been very successful and just be another one. So good luck to you. All right, okay? thanks so much. We'll take a quick break. Visit some of those athletes. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Ted Townley in Homewood today. Folks, welcome back. In this segment, we're going to be visiting with four athletes that are on the cross-country team at Hoover very quickly. Let me tell you, the way you get to see our show on the internet is cestvshow.com and like us on Facebook, okay? Now, the four athletes we got, I, I talked with a coach and wanted to do something a little bit different because cross-country, you have a varied age group our grade group of young athletes that participate. So we have a senior right next to me, Carson Trello, a junior, Presley Weems, right here, J.P. Rumor, a sophomore, and then finally Sidney Steely, a freshman. So that we've got all the classes that are included uh, uh, in the high school part of it. And so as we start this uh, little interview off with you uh, guys and gals here, uh, Carson, tell me what was the lure about cross, uh, cross country, is that the only sport, first of all, that you participate in, or you participate in the other sports? Uh, I also play rec basketball for the Hoover Rec Center, but I started cross country just to join a team. I saw some of my friends were doing it, so I thought maybe I should try it out and just see if I could run. And it just happened, I just fell in love with it, and it just happened to be a great sport. And, and you know, Coach said something about that uh, just a moment ago, and the fact that he doesn't have to recruit many people, that you guys and girls seem to do it for him by telling mm -hmm. friends that y'all are enjoying what you're doing too as well. Um, Presley, how about you? Do um, you participate in any other sports? Um, I used to play basketball for Hoover also, and 
it just wasn't really anything that I really loved. And I was running track at the same time. So then I was like, well, maybe I should run cross country and quit basketball. So I did that and picked it up and I just really started to love it. Well, now, I'm glad you said that because I was going to say, what is it you love about cross country? Um, honestly, it's the teammates. Like, there's no better team in the entire world, in my opinion. Like, and everyone's just so sweet and encouraging, and it's always just a great atmosphere. Well, uh, JP, one thing I've often wondered about the cross country athlete, when you're, uh, um, the, the meets that you run in, generally how long are they? Uh, it's usually a 5K, but sometimes, sometimes like this year, we ran a, a two mile and we ran a two and a half, and it's it's about 5,000 meters. All right, now here's the deal. Here's what I really want to know. What is it that keeps you going? I know you get tired, but what are you thinking about? Is it the pace you want to sit? Is it the guy or girl that's running behind you or beside you or in front of you? What do you think about when you're running? Because it's got to hurt. Uh, usually what I think about is I try to do it for my teammates because I know they're hurting just as bad as me and we all want to work together and win. So we just do it for each other. You know what? The coach has said this now. Y'all are saying this too. Um, I didn't realize there was that much camaraderie on a, a cross-country team or a track team. And, and, and maybe it's just common sense that it ought to be, but I didn't realize that. Sydney, talk about what is it that um, uh, when you're running and, and, and it's hurting and, and, and the race is getting tight and you've got to catch somebody or you're not going to get up as high as you want to be, what are you thinking about to, to take the um, thought of, gosh, I'm getting tired? What, what goes through your mind? Yeah, it's definitely your teammates, like, because we all try to hold each other accountable. So when you're out there running and, like, you're not exactly where you want to be and you know your teammates want you to be, like, further in the race, then, like, you definitely think about running harder for them. And for Coach Hine, like, he's always out there and you see him and he's like, you can do it. And then it just boosts you up. Okay. Well, now, another question that, that I would be curious about, and, and we'll start with you, Carson. Is there a favorite type of um, cross-country course that you like one over another, or does it matter? I particularly don't have a favorite. I just love going out and competing and just trying to get better and better every week and just try to impress my coach, just make him be proud of our team as a whole. When I see, I've always thought uh, cross country was like over the hill and through the dale and all this kind of stuff, which means up and down. And, uh, but there's a lot, I guess, a lot of flat to it as well, Presley, right? But which one, which do you prefer or does it matter? Um, I used to prefer veterans, honestly, but I kind of got to where you have to like every course because if you go into it with a bad attitude, you're more than likely not going to run as well as you want to. And so I try to go into it with, okay, I'm going to love this course, I'm going to enjoy it, and whether I want to or not, I have to because I have to run it and I don't have a choice. Um, JP, with that thought in mind, are there any schools you enjoy competing against over another, or does it really matter, just the next um, one up? Um, there's a lot of talented schools in our section of like Birmingham, but I don't really have a favorite team to compete against because most of them usually have pretty good competition and they usually put up a fight against us. Yeah, okay, well that makes sense. Uh, Sydney, is, um, do, do you have any, uh, and, and maybe it may be too early for you because you're the freshman in the group, but um, do you ever, uh, like in, in other schools, do you know anybody that you would run against that might be a friend or something? Does that ever happen to you? You compete against somebody? Yeah, definitely. You become really good friends with all your comp or your like the people you're competing against because you're with them like every weekend more than that usually. So when you get to run with them, you don't like talk during the race or anything. But after the race, you congratulate each other and you're just like keeping up with each other so you know like what your competition is. Okay, now now honesty is always the best policy, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to give me the most uh, honest answers you possibly could. And that question is, what's the one team over any other team that you compete against that you would like to beat? Well, the team I would like to beat most, we actually haven't raced them this year. It's Auburn High School. Really? It's, we've just been competing over the internet, kind of over rankings on the AL mile split. We just keep checking it every week, seeing how they're checking up, because we knew they were going to be the big team to beat come state time. Okay. How about you, Preston? Um, 
I think I can speak for most of the girls on the team, and we would honestly like to beat Mountain Brook because for years it, that's just been the fight, not only in cross country but in track too. It's just always us in Mountain Brook, and right. So y'all, y'all do have a, a sort of like a, a Hatfield and McCoy, not bitter feud, but a feud. How about you, JP? Definitely Auburn. I knew they had a strong team last year, and we knew that we'd have to get through them if we wanted to win the state championship this year. Well, I, I got a feeling that, that because this is um, shown in a lot of Hoover sports, in order to be the best, you got to beat the best. So you think that Auburn's got a pretty good squad. If y'all beat them, then you'd be right there at the top, right? Yes. Okay, how about you? Yeah, I agree with Presley. Mount Brooks is definitely who we want to beat this year. Okay, Sydney. All right. Now, here's a question that I always enjoy asking young athletes, and we'll start with the senior here. This is the first time I've ever met you guys. And let's say that there's something about you. Um, maybe you have a hobby or maybe you have a knack for this or that or the other, and nobody really knows about that. And uh, if uh, it's not that it's a secret, they just don't know about it. And so it might be one might like poetry, might, one might want to, I'm, I love playing the piano. Just something like that, something nobody knows. What would that be and what would that something be for you, Carson? For me, it'd be I'm in the Informational Technology Academy at Hoover High School. And we actually work on programming and everything about computer hardware and all that stuff. And not many people know that about me. Really? Yes, sir. And, and so... I don't, this is not a negative term, so don't think it is, but it may describe what you're talking about, a computer nerd. That yeah, you pretty do. much. Okay, and <laughs> I, I mean that as a compliment, mm -hmm. not, not in a negative way. Oh, no, that, we take it as a compliment. Okay, <laughs> how about you, Preston? Um, well, I'm a peer helper at Hoover, and I guess a lot of people might know that, but I really enjoy it, and honestly, it's the highlight of my day, like going and helping kids. Like, that's what we do. We go to, like, elementary schools and help them, well, and I really enjoy well, like, helping neat. kids. Yeah. How about you, JP? Uh, well, last year I was in choir, and I really love to sing, and sometimes on our runs we sing together just to pass the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, see, that's sort of cute. Who's one of your favorite singers? Uh, hmm. Well, what songs do you sing? Uh, just, just about anything. Really? <laughs> Old songs. New songs, <laughs> songs that hadn't been wrote yet, right? <laughs> Sydney, how about you? Um, mine kind of goes along with Presley. I used to play soccer, and our soccer team would go and help the younger soccer teams and, like, um, people from other places, and we would teach them, like, how to play soccer and different things like that. And that's really enjoyable. Okay. Um, another question that I would like to ask you, Carson, um, uh, you being the senior, what would you tell a young person uh, what has track and cross country in particular meant to you if they would ask you, should I try this? Well, what what it teaches you is it teaches you the only way to get anywhere in life is hard work. And that's the only way you can be successful. There's no shortcuts to success. And if you want to be good, you have to put in the work for it. Good. Presley, I know you probably had some young ladies saying, why do you do that? And what we, other than the fact, I love it, that's why I do it. What else would you tell them? Um, I agree with Carson on the hard work. And also, um, cross country, we're kind of like a family. And so it really teaches you to like work with others and be able to build each other up. And everyone's always positive. And you kind of have to be because you have days where you do not want to run at all. But your team's there and they're always lifting you up. And it really will help in life also. Okay. How about you, JP? Well, I feel like I've formed a bond with some of the guys in the cross country team that I haven't had with anyone else and it's like I, I don't have any brothers and I feel like I've just gotten so many so many more brothers that I can say anything to and be around every day. Oh, terrific. Mm -hmm. Okay. I definitely agree with all of them. I think that like you you have to work hard and you have to be a good teammate and like helping everyone else. Okay. Well we haven't got a whole lot of time left. I'd love to ask this question because we've got four young people, varied age here, and so uh, I'd be curious what you say to it, and to this point in your young lives, who's been the most inspirational person or persons, and we'll start with you, Carson. One of the most inspirational people in my life is my older brother, because he's just always been there for me, he's always had my back, even when I'm down or anything, he's always brought me up, and I've just always wanted to be a great leader like he is. Okay, Preston? Um, Coach Hines definitely my inspirational person, and he just like really teaches us a lot and not only about running. You just made a friend for life. You know that now. <laughs> okay, JP. Uh, mine, honestly, would probably be Carson because he's really been the leader for the guys this year and he's, he's just brought us together like no one has before and he's taught us so much and made us a great team. That's great. How about you, Sydney? 
I also like Second Chan. He's always um, motivating us and hard, like hard, working really hard and teaching us what to do. Okay, well listen, guys and gals, good luck this weekend and bring home a number one trophy, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Folks, another great show, two great coaches and a handful of great athletes. And you know what Snapper says, same time, same place, next week. Bye. Sick.